Okay, we're next joined by Johan Vraken um, from Afanova, and he's going to talk to us about digital meets package design, how technology and creating a competitive edge at, uh, at the shelf. Welcome, Johan. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, let me take a bit of water because my voice is known to break me through presentations. How is everybody doing? Good. Um, so this morning we're going to talk about uh, how technologies and digital technologies are actually creating competitive edges at shelf. And what you'll see in this session is three things. First, how is technology changing our lives? A topic that we've actually heard quite a lot in the, in the first sessions uh, today, this morning. Then some key observations of a study that we did uh, across different CPG verticals um, in terms of packaging design and what's working well, what's not working. And then most of it will be actually a case study on Sprite, a project that we did for Coke. Now, first and for all, technology is changing our lives. Um, well, it has been discussed this morning quite regularly. Actually, people are taping this, so next week this will be on the internet, so my mother-in-law in Belgium uh, are coming home for Christmas soon. Uh, actually, if you look at different applications in technology, one of the things uh, which came about more recently are evolutionary algorithms. Um, if you remember the PwC video, and you remember that consumer talking about his Vimeo experience and that now Vimeo is actually serving him videos that are completely aligned with his uh, preferences and taste, there's evolutionary algorithms in the back that are doing so. And actually other companies like Amazon, Google, Facebook, iTunes, you name it, they all have evolutionary algorithms to help them out on uh, different aspects of their business. Um, what is an evolutionary algorithm? It's an algorithm that uses uh, principles of biological evolution, call it survival of the fittest to keep it simple. And actually, in business, it solves complex problems in a very efficient way. If you remember the talk that John gave, he mentioned um, uh, one of the courier companies that are delivering the packages, how they have optimized their routes. For sure, there's evolutionary algorithms in the back that help them optimize the routes based on the data that they got. Now also in CPG, it works as well. Uh, because basically consumer products are evolving all the time. And what we're doing is we're replacing modern nature by consumers. And we're putting them in a test environment and we're letting them evolve products. And at Afinova, we've been applying this uh, in different uh, ways for new products, for packaging design, for messaging, and for price online optimization. Um, and I think we did a really good job because six, uh, seven weeks ago now, we got acquired by Nielsen, so technically I'm presenting this on behalf of Nielsen nowadays. Uh, but I'm here not to talk about mergers and acquisitions, but to talk about packaging design. So let's zoom in on that. What matters in packaging design? First and for all, noticeability. Can your consumer see your packaging? And can it hold attention? Then secondly, conversion. Once they've seen your packaging, is it communicating value? Is it communicating value in such a way that it convinces them to buy that product over any competitor product that they're seeing in the shelf as well? And then third but not least, brand alignment. Is it in line with the brand equity of the brand and does it help uh, growing that equity or is actually blocking uh, the growth of that equity? So it, with these things in mind, let's look at one of the more legendary failures in packaging design which is Tropicana. I'm pretty sure that most of you know this case study. But back in 2009, when they launched their new packaging, which is that nice little box on the right, uh, in about two months' time after the launch, they lost 33 millions of revenue. Consumers couldn't recognize the pack anymore, couldn't find the brand anymore. And still today, Tropicana is trying to make up for the loss in market share uh, during that period. And obviously, they went back. Uh, to some kind of the previous packaging after they noticed that basically their new packaging wasn't working well. Now when we put that into an audit and we audited that new packaging versus the traditional packaging that they had on the left top side versus some of the competitors that were existing at that time and we look at visibility, one of the things that became clear was that the new design fell far short of original. So basically, the new design was 60% less visible than the actual design that they had before. People couldn't find it anymore. Now, if you look at conversion, the data that we got from consumers doing this brand audit was that actually it delivered 50% less than the original design in terms of uh, converting consumers to actually uh, wanting to uh, buy that product, and 35% less than their first competitor. 
And also in terms of brand alignment, it's scored less than what the actual, what the existing packaging was doing before. So basically that was a, a, a real good case example on how packaging design is tricky and how you need to make sure that you use the right data, you use the right uh, research methodologies to make uh, good choices going forward. When we did that CBG-wide analysis, which uh, by now we've done that uh, in more than 30 different categories from soap to beer to you name it, it's, most of them are there. And we've evaluated more than 500 designs out there on the market. Um, we're seeing quite a couple of interesting learnings there. For example, if we look at the vodka audit and we look at visibility gaps between performing brands and less performing brands, we saw that, for example, Svitka, which was one of the more performing brands in terms of visibility, outperforms Smirnoff, which is a leading brand, but unfortunately not that visual on shelf, uh, with more than 30%. And if we look at the aggregate of all the audits that we've, did, uh, that we've done so far, we look at an average of 76% gap between the highest performing packaging designs in terms of visibility versus the lowest performing packaging designs. And that's something which is nearly impossible to, to, to bridge uh, with what any marketing support that you want to bring that. If your product is not visible enough, it simply won't survive. And then when we look at brand conflict, we saw that about more than 50% of all in-market packaging actually diminishes the brand on critical personality characters, which is linked to the brand equity of those brands. So there's a flaw there as well. And there's room for opportunity. There's room to, 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 to improve on that. Now bringing that to Sprite, uh, because that will allow me to actually showcase the optimization technology and bring it back to the first point, evolutionary algorithms and how they are now being applied to help you optimize products but also packaging design. We did this project for Sprite and we did it for Sprite Zero, whereby Sprite Zero has limited brand support, it's fairly unaware uh, being Sprite Zero, and across the world has disparate packaging and silver cues. So in the US they had this blue packaging, in a lot of other markets they had a silver packaging. The silver packaging has quite um, a negative connotation in terms of negative connotations on, on diet and so forth. And they wanted to see how we can we improve that. And what the client told us were, or asked us was, can blue travel, can our blue packaging that we use in the US, can that travel around the world? Or is there something universal and better that we could adopt in terms of packaging design for Sprite Zero? And what they also mentioned was, we actually have a flawed system because it's not collaborative. And think about it. That's Primarily the case in, in most companies, I would say, you have the designers of the design agency on one hand, they're working in a silo, they really don't like us, market researchers in general, and I do presentations to design agencies a lot, and my first comment is always, I'm representing market research, don't throw me out yet, hear me talk. Uh, the brand manager, they're very risk averse, uh, nobody wants to be the next topic on a brand manager, uh, and they want to have data, they want to have numbers, they want to have insights to make sure that they can make the right decision. Uh, the market research people in packaging design uh, projects basically come in at the far end of it and they're not being used to, to, to their maximum potential and then the consumers are not uh, regarded at all. That's what Coke told us. So if you look at that typical system is uh, a couple of design routes are being designed, it goes out to a very limited number of people at client side that evaluate and things start to die off and from a couple of rounds we go to less uh, variation, we go to less variation, and maybe at the end of it, maybe at the real end of it, if you have maybe one or two designs left, maybe at that point you validate it with consumers. And that's simply a process which is not working. So what we've put in place is that optimizer for packaging design, whereby in the first stage, it allows you to explore and to collaborate with all the stakeholders to the project. So first and for all, uh, it eases concern. Um, we let the designers work in a system where they feel comfortable. We let them uh, develop and further design in their Adobe software. Secondly, if we're involved from the start, we can indicate those designers as well on the purpose of the research and what we're doing, and that we're actually allowing them to be more creative. Because basically, what we see in optimization is that sometimes more of the daring uh, designs will be more appealing to consumers. So don't block yourself. Don't, don't be very safe because traditionally you have to be very safe because nobody at client side wants to take risks. Also explore packaging designs that go out uh, further and that are more uh, innovative and revolutionary. That's where the designers start to like us. 
and they still have control because basically what we take out to consumers are designs that are coming from the design agency. So they can completely control the process in such a way that we're not sending out Frankenstein designs to uh, the audience or to the consumers and end up with something which from a designer point of view wouldn't make sense. Knowledge is power, that comes back to my previous point about informing them on the process and what exactly are we going to do about it so they know what is required from them and how do they need to design um, the different packaging designs. And at the end of the day, what we come back with is guidance. It still is an evaluation of a design concept which brings insights back to the client and to the design agency for them to further refine and finalize that packaging design. It's not a mandate. So how does that work? First and for all, the collaboration, we let them work in Adobe. There's an automatic plugin to bring it uh, into the Afinova Studio environment. And that's a platform whereby the other stakeholders can give feedback and start collaborating and so forth. And what we've seen is when we analyze Afinova Studio results is that there's a direct correlation between the amount of people that are working on a project together to give feedback, to give suggestions and so on, and the quality output at the end of the project. Then, after that is finalized and done with, we take it into optimization. And that's where the unique part comes in. That's where we work with our uh, patented set of evolutionary algorithms, whereby we take it to consumers. And the nice thing is instead of just taking one or two designs to consumers, we can take dozens of designs to consumers, hundreds, thousands, if the client wants to go that far, even millions of designs. And I'll explain you how, how we get from a million of designs back to just a couple of best uh, performing designs. And we give them an exercise that looks like that. So it's a discrete choice based methodology whereby people are making choices. And we try to replicate reality as much as we can. Uh, we're not asking uh, consumers to over-rationalize uh, their decisions. We're just asking them, would you go for this one or would you go for that one, in a very simplified way. And then consumers can look at that design. They can zoom out, see some competitive context, look at the other design, and make a choice. By doing that, and by making every choice over and over again, and we do this typically with about 450 consumers in one market, our evolutionary algorithms are getting smarter with every decision. Oops, <laughs> I'm not there yet. Um, so let me accelerate that. So and what, what's the output of that is the algorithms are getting smarter, it's survival of the fittest, things die off, and what remains are top designs. And those top designs are then being taken into a benchmarking phase, whereby we benchmark them against competition and against the actual designs that the client already had. We do a very similar exercise there, more than happy to talk about it in, in the breaks or tomorrow. And the outcome of that is a couple of insights. Can consumers find product at shelf? Yes, the blue packaging is findable, but it doesn't support your brand equity. Uh, what is the potential in market share? Well, if you add green to your silver, it actually um, increases visibility as well as creates more preference for that kind of design. And how well does a new package fit with your brand personality? Well, there's different ones, but the green to clear is more on brand equity. It's actually communicating and refreshing, so that would actually be the better choice if you compare those two together. And what do consumers like or dislike? All these kind of insights you typically get out of that benchmarking stage. Can blue travel? No, except it's acceptable in the US. The US consumer seems to be uh, accepting it and there it can work. Is there something better? Yes, green to clear is the most uh, uh, performing design of all the designs that got optimized and got, uh, got benchmarked. And that's something that you can uh, travel around the world in different markets. I'm gonna skip this. We get better collaboration thanks to this system. Economies of scale, obviously you can uh, look at limitless creative potential. And the implications are that technology, once again, will drive a radical change in this industry. And uh, as with most industries, technology will lead this transformation also in terms of packaging design and also in terms of uh, market research. Thank you very much. Thanks. Now, any questions for Johan? Um, hi, I was wondering with the Tropicana example, I would assume that they had done some type of research before changing the packaging, um, you know, make people think it's more refreshing and things like that. So do you know the background in terms of did they do the research, put out the product, but possibly the research was flawed? I have no idea. Uh, we were not uh, PepsiCo's client at the time. We are now, but not for that uh, <laughs> Tropicana project. So I have no idea what, what kind of methodology they used. I'm pretty sure they used some kind of research, but no idea which one. Yep. 
I, I'm, not, I'm not sure this is true, but I, I heard that they did do research and they did debranded research. So they, they smoothed over the Tropicana thing. And I think that's why. So it was a nice looking hat, but it, it, it was the brand that was missing. That's, I think that's true. That makes sense. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, Alistair Electro from Simplot. Just curious as to how finalised the designs need to be when you put them into something like the optimizer. Um, for a packaging design optimizer, we would recommend to have something which is pre-finalised because the closer you are to in market execution, the better the results are going to be and the better we're going to be able to predict what's going to happen in the marketplace. So the more you get to as close as possible to what could be a final design, the better. <coughs> But sometimes we're earlier into the, into the stage, so then it can be a bit lower, it can be less exploration and all that, and it can be an initial uh, kind of uh, checking if we're going in the right direction with that packaging design or not. Any other questions? I have one quick question for you. You talked about the graphic designer and they don't typically like market research, etc. How do they feel about when you break that process down to a lot more sort of elements, do you feel that, you know, yep. that they, their job's been taken away? Well, I'll, I'll give you an example. We are involved currently with a client in China. Um, it's another category. And basically, um, they have a very iconic packaging design. And the design agency that's working with them has done a fabulous job. They've been working on it for about six months now. And they went all the way from the existing iconic packaging to something which is really nice looking, very revolutionary and all that. And over the six months of time, the client has gone gradually closer and closer and closer to the existing design. And what's now out there, it's not, it's not on the market yet because we're probably gonna, gonna do that research pretty soon, but the preferred design that they have right now looks kind of exactly the same as what they have already on the market. So why would you do that? Why would you put all the millions of investments in changing your packaging design, maybe changing your supply chain somehow, to do something which the consumer at the end of the day will not even recognize as being new? So in this case, that design agency is super happy with us coming into the, into the equation because now we're going to not only test that, but also all the other options that were developed in the last six months, including the outer options as well, to see what's actually driving consumer preference. And once creatives start realizing that, that it opens up that potential to go far, they, can, they start liking it very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Johan. You're welcome.